This is probably one of my favorite episodes that I've done in quite a while. And obviously, we're going to talk about the semiconductor market. I do want to thank David C for asking this question that pretty much gave this episode meaning. What do you think about ASML? Now, I pretty much said spending costs for equipment is still strong for multiple years. But I do believe David's question mainly comes from this fear of semiconductor companies right now. We can see ASML and numerous other semiconductor giants are down roughly 48% to over 60% from all time highs. A lot of the fear is that, hey, there's an overproduction in semiconductors. There's also the fear in consumer spending decreasing and the fear that many companies are going to be correcting inventory. All of this, plus the other macroeconomic events happening as well, is causing a huge dive in stock prices. So on today's episode, I want to take a closer look at ASML and previous years. For example, 2009 was a horrible year for ASML and the semiconductor market. Due to semiconductor equipment demand collapsing in the first quarter of 2009, as customers went through inventory correction and production capacity adjustments as the world was going through a tough financial impact. So how is 2009 different from what we can see right now? Well, let's find out in today's episode. I do want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and make sure to check out fool.com slash Jose to get the top 10 stocks to buy right now. So first, I want to take a closer look at revenue at Micron Technology. This is a company that produces memory and two semiconductor equipment companies, ASML and LAM Research. For those not familiar with ASML, this is a company that provides equipment needed to manufacture semiconductors. Their big customers tend to be the foundry business like TSM, Samsung, Intel, so on and so forth. So if we take a closer look at years between 2015 to now, we can see the memory market is one that tends to be very, very volatile. One thing I do want to mention is the equipment manufacturing company does not seem that same volatility. They are a lot more stable, and this is why certain semiconductor investors prefer to invest in semiconductor equipment companies opposed to semiconductor giants. But there are times when ASML's revenue took a huge, huge hit. One of those times is in 2009. We can see there was a huge, huge decline in ASML's revenue. Like I previously showed, 2009 was the weakest this company has seen, and we can see how the overall trend was. 2007 was super strong for them. 2008, they saw a bit of a decline. 2009, the overall market just collapsed, but then it brought back up to 2010. And this is something I want to mention for long-term investors, right? It does show this positivity that, hey, downturns usually happen and last maybe a few quarters. But things eventually tend to pick up, especially if the company provides value to its customers. And if you are enjoying the episode so far, make sure to hit the thumbs up as it does help me grow my overall audience. If you want to support a little bit more, make sure to subscribe using my link at fool.com slash Jose. Finally, if you want to learn more about the semiconductor market, make sure to subscribe to my newsletter. The link is down below and that should be coming out soon. But one thing I wanted to see is where was the market in ASML and what was the equipment being used for? Obviously, right now in 2022, we can see the technology that chips are being used phones, laptops, artificial intelligence, machine learnings, cloud computing, data centers, aerospace and defense, and numerous other emerging technologies like autonomous driving, autonomous just kind of solutions from all types of deliveries to also vehicles in general. So I actually went back to ASML's quarterly presentations from quarter three of 2008 all the way to quarter three of 2010, so roughly nine quarters. And if we take a closer look, six out of those nine quarters, most of the end use of their equipment was memory. So we can see quarter three of 2008, 63% end use was memory. Quarter two of 2009, 59%. Quarter three of 2009, 71%. Quarter one of 2010, 78. Quarter two of 2010, 63. If you add NAN and DRAM, quarter three of 2010, roughly 60%. So we can see that back then technology was very, very dependent in memory. So, you know, I wanted to go back in time and I took a look at Best Buy's Black Friday sale of 2009. And we can see a lot of the things that they were selling were just phones, TVs, monitors, gaming system, 
and cameras. DVD players were also a big thing. I totally forgot about disc for a while, but DVD and Blu-rays. So we can see, I mean, TVs, Blu-ray players, cameras, none of them needed huge computational power. Even phones back then didn't really need much processing power. They just need really good memory because everybody wanted to hold music. Everybody wanted to hold their pictures. So now let's push into where we're at right now. So we understood in the past, a lot of the use cases for semiconductor was memory. I do want to give a huge shout out to semi.org. They recently just released a fab equipment research and they show that for 2022, they are expecting growth of roughly 9%. And this is going to be all time highs of $99 billion being spent in fab equipment. 2023 is also expected to be strong at $97 billion. And we can see the overall growth in just the past few years. If we want to understand where this spending is coming, roughly 30% is coming from Taiwan. They're spending roughly $30 billion this year. Korea spending 22.2. China is spending $22 billion as well. Europe and Middle East is spending about $6.6. .6. The Americas and Southeast Asia are actually expected to register record high investments in 2023. Again, it is going to do because a lot of countries right now are trying to become less dependent in some of the players right now. For example, here in the United States, we have things like the CHIPS Act, where we're bringing more semiconductor manufacturing in-house. And remember, this takes multiple years in investments. So even though we might see a weakness in the semiconductor market, the semiconductor investment spending is things that are needed to be done for multiple years. For example, some of the plants that Intel are building, they're not going to be operational until 2025. So in reality, Intel is saying, yes, it's going to suck if 2023 and 2022, we do see a heavy weakness in PC sales, but that's only going to last a few quarters. What we really need is 2025 when we need massive productions, we are going to have that investment ready for us. I also want to say ASML has actually shifted in where the market needs those chips. Like I mentioned earlier on, right now chip dependency is used where? Internet of things, automotive, autonomous driving, cloud data centers, artificial intelligence, machine learnings, mobile phones have just evolved into high performance computing, laptops. What else do we have? GPUs, CPUs, DPUs, the list goes on and on. All right, so now let's move to ASML and where it's at right now. We can see 2021 was a huge year for ASML, dramatic increase from 2020. In 2022, it's not that they're seeing a slowdown in revenue. What they're actually seeing is a slowdown in revenue recognition. So they are having a tougher time due to overall semiconductor shortage to kind of make their equipment as fast as possible and test them how they normally test them. So what they're doing now to speed up the process, they're sending their equipment to their customers and do their final testing at their customers camps. And then after that, recognizing revenue. If we actually take a look at system bookings for the company, they continue to grow and right now sitting at roughly 8.5 billion euros. And also I want to mention if we take a closer look at end uses of their current system, a majority is now logic dependent and not memory dependent. For quarter two of 2022, 71% was logic. If we take a closer look at four, quarter four of 2021, quarter three of 2021, again, logic is the majority end use. I mean, even quarter four of 2020 and quarter one of 2021, logic is again majority usage and again logic where does that come from from that kind of technology that i mentioned already and who is the biggest provider of logic chips at the moment tsmc and the great thing is tsmc gives us monthly reports of how their revenue is actually doing and we can see for 2022 each month has grown dramatically year to date from january to august we can see revenue has actually grown 43.5 percent so i do want to say right now it's still looking pretty good for asml as we see their logic leader still seeing strong revenue growth and we're still seeing strong cases from governments to kind of bring dependency of manufacturing i do want to say a yellow flag for asml would be if we start to see heavy decline in monthly revenue from tsmc but again that's pretty much going be short-lived like we saw usually bad economic times only last a few quarters but so if you are a long-term investor you definitely have time on your side so at the end of the day i personally even though i don't hold asml i wouldn't be fearful of the company or holding it in the long term of things 
If my investment was a lot more short-lived, then definitely something to be worried about. For someone holding ASML for five plus years, I do believe this would be a company that provides strong returns. So Davis, I hope this answered the question. And if anybody else had any questions about semiconductor companies, feel free to let me know in the comments below.